question, sis? Come, come forward. What's your question? I heard you speaking about the law. In the Old Testament, from what I understand, there were so many laws and sacrifices that had to be made for, for you to kill animals and to bring first fruit animal, first fruit, good blood to God. If Jesus was the lamb, and he said to us, I come with a greater commandment than all of the commandments that you love one another. Then what commandment is there really to keep except that we love one another? Yeah, yeah. Do you love me? Huh? Do you love me? I don't know you. Do you love me? I don't know you. <laughs> I'm trying to... I, listen, I'm going to be real with you. I don't know you. Okay. And I know what he said. Right, but let me, let me, let me, let me, you said, do I love you? Let me just no, say this. You, Be, before I knew the word of God, I don't know who I love, but now he tells me by his word that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So yes, I can love you. I can love you. I don't have to make love to you, but I can love you. I can. Even though I don't know you. First of all, you don't love me. Because if you love me, you're going to judge me and tell me what I. I let you talk. I let you talk. God is love. I let you talk. God is love and God is in all of us. No, you don't love. Because you don't love. Stop wearing a dress. You hate your people. What is love? What is love? Let me say something. Let me say something. Let me say something. You said no, 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 no. I need to wear a dress. I wore a dress for 12 you years straight. I wore a dress when you I got in my church 12 years ago. I never wore pants. I never wore pants. Listen to what God says. I never wore pants. You want to know why? Because I never wore pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because my church told me it was illegal to wear pants. Because he that no, says, I know him. You say you know God. You love Jesus. Nothing. And keep it not his but commandment. But you are keeping your own. Stop this dress. These pants you are nothing like right but cotton. And a liar. You are a You are a liar. My clothes yeah, look, You see, you can't look, look see. how she's kicking. She says she loves God. Look how she's acting. This is how is is a is woman of God. You must not act. You are not acting godly. You are not acting Stop godly. You are a liar. Read it again. You are a liar. He that is not acting godly, you are not acting godly, and keeping God is commanded. You are not keeping God's laws. You dress like a man. You talk like a man. You act like a man. You dress like a woman. That looks like a dress. That's not a dress. It looks like one. It looks like one. And you took your pants off. It looks like a dress. You are not acting godly. 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 If you took your pants Sister, off, calm down. that looks calm like a dress. Calm down. Let's be, calm down let's be for a ladies minute. and gentlemen here, okay? Sister, calm down for a minute. Let's calm down for a minute. Like Sis, calm down things. for a minute. Relax. Calm down for a minute. Now, when you're talking, I'm going to be quiet. When you're talking, when I'm talking, you're going to be quiet. Come down for me. What is your question? Let's start over again. What is your question? Now, the floor is yours. What is your question? My question is yes. this. This is my question. Abraham, ma'am. Don't, don't listen to her. Ma'am. That's me. I'm talking to you now. M.A. Abraham, ma'am. Just, what is your Wait question? Wait a minute. I'm talking, don't listen to her. I'm talking to you. What is your question? My question is this. Yes. Why is he so judgmental? Don't no, wait. Sis, have you listened to what I said? I'm talking to you now. What is your question? Can Do you I, have a question for us? Can I Do you have a question for me? What is your question? My question is simply this. Thank you. Yes. 
whether Jesus was white or black. From the dust we came and from the dust we are gonna return, is that right? So, so my question is this, what color is the word? What color is Jesus? That's what you, color is the word is my question. What is the word? What is the word? Answer my question. What, where are you going? You ask a question, I'm about to answer your question, you run. You see, you see the mentality of our people? She asked me a question. I'm going to answer a question. Before she answered the question, she took off. Thou art my son. Read that verse again. What verse are you in? Verse 5. That's the verse I needed. But I read all of that so we can know who we're reading about. Read verse 5 again. For unto which of the angels said, For unto which of the angels said he at any time. Did God say at any time, Thou art my son. God did not say that to any of the other angels. He only said that to Christ. Right. Read. This day have I begotten thee. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father. What did we just hear here? The word again. Read that verse again. And I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. Did you skip what I asked you to read the verse again? Oh, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. God didn't say that to any of the angels. Come on. This day have I begotten thee. This day have I begotten thee. He said that when he was baptized by John. He said, this day have I begotten thee, meaning that he begotten Christ to the world. That, that, the, that Christ was his son. That was when it was done in the open. You follow me? Okay. Keep reading. And again. And again. Why is he saying again? Because the first time it was said to him in secret. Through the prophet David. That's why he's saying the word again there. Read it again. For unto which of the angels said he at any time. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again. And again. I will be to him a father. He said and again he will be to me a father. I will be to him a father because the first time he was the father when he, when he came out as Solomon. That's what we just read in Samuel. Go ahead. And he shall be to me a son. And he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and, all, and let all the angels of God worship him. So you got that? Because Christ's name was above everybody. Okay. Matthew's 1 verse 18 Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph What does it mean when it's espoused to Joseph? She's engaged to Okay, how do, how do, how do the, This is what's wrong with, with our people Our people don't understand the customs of Israel Okay, that's the reason why they could come up with this immaculate assumption Read it again now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. This is what people read and they get right. This is what people read and they get mixed up. That's before they came together in what? Before they came together in sex? No. Before they came together in marriage. In marriage. Wait, let me ask you. What is the custom of marriage according to the Bible? Before you get into the New Testament, you need to understand the customs of marriage. A lot of black women, you put, you allow the white man to put your American doctrines into the Bible. So it said before they came together. What does it mean according when you read the history of Israel? Before they came together, what does it mean? Read it again for her, because this is the scripture you want him to read, right? Yeah. Read it. Matthew 1 verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, 
promised to Joseph, engaged to Joseph. Before they came together. Before they came together, this is the confusion, right here. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the next confusion. But before we get to the Holy Ghost, let's get to the before they came together. What is the custom of marriage according to God? Okay, well, if you're speaking of sex, I'm, I'm going to say that when Christ came to the well and asked the woman, where's your husband? She said she had none because she had so many men that she was already sleeping with. So that would make all those men her husband if that was the case, and she didn't have any. My so act question not, was, what is the custom, again, what is the custom of marriage according to God in the Bible? You ain't answered the question yet. There was a marriage ceremony. There's no... What was the marriage ceremony? How, what, what, what did it consist of? You don't just have sex in your marriage. Okay, explain it to us, so I know you understand. Okay, so, in other words, Christ himself um, went to a wedding of someone and he performed the, the miracle about having wine. So, of course, there was a, a, a ceremony to show that there was a, 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 a coming together union between a man and a woman. Now, that, that marriage was then consummated after they had sex. It wasn't that they had sex um, before having the, the, the union. The, the, um, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, meaning that they were engaged. Uh -huh. They didn't know her yet. They didn't have sex yet. So before they came together, we weren't that part. Before they came together. Right. Hold that. Give me to, uh, Tobit 7.14. I explain it. It's explained in the book of uh, Judges with Samson, but this gets to the point. This is what we need all you sisters to understand. Come on. Tobit 7, give me 13 and 14. Tobit 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah. And she came to her father, and he took her by the hand, and gave her to be wife to Tobias, Go ahead. saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses. Take her after the law of Moses. Come on. And lead her away to thy father. Come on. And he blessed them, and called Edna his wife. Go ahead. And took paper. And took papers. And, and did write an instrument of covenant. So one thing regarding before they came together, the husband, the father, the mother and father got together and took paper and wrote what? An instrument of covenant. They wrote, covenant. They wrote an instrument of covenant, which I'll call marriage certificates today. Read. And sealed it. And sealed it. Go ahead. They began to eat and regale after his wife Edna. Slap. After Regal called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. Now the chamber that was prepared, the husband and wife during the marriage feast got together, they signed the papers, went into the marriage chamber, consummated the marriage, and they became husband and wife. That was the custom of marriage. Now go back to Matthew chapter 1. I need you to stay with me. The same things are explained in the book of Judges with Samson. It's explained with David also with his wife Michelle. Matthew 1 18. Matthew 1 verse 18. Uh -huh. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together. Now, before they came together involves what we just read. The mother and father getting together, writing an instrument of covenants. They enter the marriage chamber during the feast. That was the custom. That was the law. But before that happened, what happened? She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She was found with child. She was already pregnant. Now, what don't Joseph had dealt with her? What is the Holy Ghost making reference to? Because that's the next confusion that slavery has indoctrinated our mind, the minds of our men and women. What is the Holy Ghost according to the Bible? What is it? It's another part of God. Give me Acts chapter 7. Come on. Let's explain the Holy Ghost. Acts 7, I think 50 something. Come on. Acts 7, verse 51. Jesus. Ye stick nefted. Ye stiff necked. Come on. And uncircumcised. And uncircumcised. Come on. And heart and, and ears. And ears. Because just like back then you had rebellious Israelites, so today we have black men and black women who are rebellious against God's laws. Read. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. He's going to break it down for you right now. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shoot before of the coming of the just one, of whom he have been now the betrayers and murderers. 
who have received the law by the disposition of angels. This is what we want, who have received the law by the disposition of angels. And have not kept it. And have not kept it. Verse 51 again. Verse 51, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. Now jump down to the verse you just read, 53. Verse 53, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So what was the Holy Ghost our people rejected? What was the Holy Ghost that our fathers during the time of Moses rejected? What was it? You just read it. Read it again for them. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Now 51 again. 51. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. So what is the Holy Ghost that our forefathers rejected as we do today? The law. The law. The law. Now go back to uh, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew 1 verse 18. Come on. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When? As his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together. Before they came together, marriage feast, which involved the instrument of covenant and a marriage chamber. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Joseph got her pregnant. That was the shame. You know why that was a shame? Because it went against the laws. Black women today, you don't got that shame no more. How many black women get pregnant with no daddy? With no marriage feast? Nine out of ten. What religion are you? No, I don't have a religion. You don't have a religion? No. Dressed all in white, there's no religion? You're not a Baptist or nothing like that? Uh-huh. John chapter 1, verse 45. Listen good. John chapter 1, verse 45. Listen. Philip, father Nathaniel, and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did right. Now who is Philip? Nathaniel speaking here, right? He's one of the what? The apostles, correct? Yeah. The apostles were anointed of God, correct? Let's read what he said again. Read it again. Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did right. Philip is speaking, go ahead. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. The son of Joseph. Wait, what? The son of Joseph. So the, the apostles understood something black people don't know today. Christ was always known as the son of Joseph. So what happened between the Bible and today? Slavery happened. Slavery happened. The white man got up in our heads, and now Christ didn't have no daddy. Read it again in case you didn't listen to it. Philip the Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did right. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. The son of Joseph. Now he was 12 and 16. I know the brother just read this for you. Oh, we're going to go through it again. One more again. You read this when he was 12, 16, right? Watch this. Listen good. Now, Jesus Christ is the son of Joseph. Now, let's... Yes, he was 2, 16. Thank you. Hebrews, the second chapter of the 16th verse. For verily, he took not of him the nature of angels. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels. What does that mean? What does that mean? If you don't know, it's okay. Because all of us at one point in time, we did not know. Read it again, for. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels. No immaculate conception. Let me say it again. No immaculate conception. That's because right. angels do not have fathers and mothers. They're created. So now, it's talking about Christ. Read it again. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels. Read. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. The word seed translates to what? Because the brother explained it to you. Sperm. Jesus Christ took on the sperm of Abraham. Now, does sperm come from men or women? Men. So what uh, Philip said in John chapter 1, we have found him who Moses spoke about. Jesus Christ, the son of Joseph. You see how the scriptures go together? Read on. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Did Jesus Christ have brothers and sisters? Okay. Read it again, Father. Wherefore, in all things, 
it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. But you know what? Let's prove he had brothers and sisters because there's some doctrines out there that say Mary was an ever virgin. The lie that the Bible, the devil made. Hold on, give me Matthew 13 and 55. Drop everything out, whole Hebrews. Whole Hebrews, and we want Matthew 13, 55 to explain that Jesus Christ had a full family with a mother, a father, sisters, and brothers, just like you and I. Read. Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 55th verse. Is not this the carpenter's son? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. Is not this the carpenter's son? Who was the carpenter, Mary or Joseph? Huh? Joseph? Joseph was the carpenter. Very good. Read it again. Is not this the carpenter's son? You notice how everybody in the Bible knows that Christ is the son of Joseph except black people today? Right. Slavery done messed us up. Come on. Is not his mother called Mary? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren? And his brothers? James? And Joseph and his brothers are James and Joseph. Come on. And Simon and Judas. And Simon and Judas. Those are his blood brothers. And his sisters. And Jesus Christ had sisters. Right. 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 Come on. Are they not all with us? Isn't his whole family here with us? Good. When then hath this man all these days? Let's go right back to Hebrews 2 and 16 again. Hebrews 2 verse 16. For verily. He took not on him the nature of angels. He did not take on him the nature of angels. No immaculate conception. Read. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. But he took on him the sperm of Abraham. He came from the seed of Abraham. Read. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like his brothers, That's James, Joseph, Praise and his Jehovah. sisters. You understand? Come on. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. But why would he be made like us? That he what? That he might be merciful and a faithful high priest. Because if Jesus Christ was made of immaculate conception, could he understand what I go through, or you go through if he wasn't made like us? If he stayed on the God level, we, he could not, uh, give me a word, he could not be an example or, or relate to us because he don't know what man goes through. But that's why Hebrews, Paul said what? Wherefore? Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Why? That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. That he might be a faithful, merciful and faithful high priest. In things pertaining to God. In things pertaining to God because now we can go to him. Lord, I'm struggling. I'm going through this temptation, that temptation. My wife, my brothers and sisters are doing this and that to me. I understand, my son. My daughter, I've been through that same thing too. You understand? So now, watch this. Titus, wait, read on. Keep reading. Keep going. Right, okay, keep reading it. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now, go ahead. Come on, read on. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted. He was tempted just like you and I. If he was a God, he would not suffer temptation. When he came and that man loved him, he suffered temptation just like you, just like me. What's your next question? Wait, 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 but do you understand what we just read? Okay, go ahead. But the question that I have is that in the scripture it was saying that he wasn't born of sin, like the rest of us was born in sin. And it's not that. You give me that scripture. What scripture is that? But give me one second. Let me finish my question first. Okay, good. Okay, so it was saying how you were born in sin, and it's not because our parents weren't married. It's raining, that's why I don't want to get in the rain. They were married, and even though they're married, you are still born in sin. In sex. The sin is sex? It's not a sex that a sin to have sex. Is that what you're saying? Listen, listen. Go ahead, go ahead. Because in, in, in Genesis, we're going to go to Genesis, uh -huh. right? Adam, mm -hmm. which I'm not talking about Eve, I'm okay. talking about Adam. Go ahead. Because the word Adam means male and female. So no, it doesn't. Male. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, but I, I showed you what I know exactly what you're talking about, but that's not what it means. Okay, go ahead. cool. Can you break that down for me? Yes. Okay, so. They were naked, they didn't know that they were naked until after the sin was committed. So, but before that happened, I don't mean to confuse anything, before that happened, when God created male and female, he said he blessed them, which is in Genesis 26, Genesis 1, uh -huh. 26, where he said he blessed them and told them to go forth and, and um, multiply and be fruitful. Uh -huh. Right? So what is he talking about? The male species by himself. 
uh -huh. multiply. Now, they didn't know they were naked, so they couldn't be interacting with each other at that point. So I'm thinking, this is my thought. This is your thought. This okay, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because so I'm going to wink at what you say. Okay. Go ahead. Wink at what I say, but then okay. you're going to explain. You're going to explain. break it down later on. Yes. So let me just complete the thought. Okay. So what happened is, is that before the scene actually happened, they were naked. They could actually have children without having sex. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so it's okay. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's okay. I laughed too. Go ahead. So they can have children without having sex. Now it was after the thing that they found that's when they realized, oh, I'm physically naked because they were on a higher level. Now they're not on that higher level. So now they're on this, this thing where they you have the parts. God only knew that this was gonna happen because in love, in true love. Us the free will to do what we want, right? So he says everything is beneficial, but not everything is. Um, no, everything is. No, the other way. The other way around. Sorry. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial, right? So in in order to create us and say that he loves us, yes, but the free will to do whatever we want, but we need to be robots. So he put everything in place, right, for us to do what we want and to also protect us in the end. So now, after the first um, sin was committed, then he says, now, in childbirth, woman, you shall have pain, yada, yada, yada. She didn't even, she wasn't even going to have any pain, but it was after that. First, give me wisdom of Solomon 7, 1 through 6. Give me that, the apocrypha. Now the Apocrypha was taken out of the Bible by the Protestant yeah, Christians. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 1 through 6. Like it, and I say, Slavery did a job on our people. Listening to you? Slavery did a no, job. No, I didn't have nothing to do with this. That was me. Because I know Listen. any church I go to, they're going to look at me crazy. Listen. But that's all right. Watch this. <laughs> over here, can we yeah, do it? All right. This, uh, you brought us to pick up this side. Now there is this side. Just over here so we can make sure. All right. Bring this side. Over here. And this is going to come out of the rain. We're going to continue. All right. This, we don't want it on the line. We're going to have to use this side. We're going to have to use this side. You used Dennis to say that before the sin was committed, they had they had babies without without sex. Wisdom of Solomon chapter seven. Wisdom, Wisdom Solomon chapter seven verse one. Now King Solomon, the wisest man on the earth, who the spirit of God endowed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Listen to what he said in the spirit. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Like the offspring of him that was made from the earth, Adam. Go ahead. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months. Solomon said he was in his mother's womb, womb being fashioned in ten months. Go ahead. Being compacted in blood. Being compacted in blood. Of the seed of man. Of the seed, is that word again, of the seed of man. And the pleasure that came with sleep. Because in the mother's womb the child sleeps, right? Go ahead. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth. Here it comes. Which is of like nature, and the first voice which I uttered was crying. Come on. As all others do. I was nursed in swaddling cloths, and that with cares. For there is no king. Now this is the part we want. Read that verse again. For there is no king. For there is no king, no great man upon the earth. That had any other beginning of birth. That had any other beginning of birth. Do you understand that? Nobody had a different birth according to the Bible. Everyone came the same way except Adam. Everybody else came the same way. That's what Solomon's explaining to us. Everyone came with a mother and a father. Okay? So now I'm going to just jump back just for a don't second. Don't jump, don't jump because I want to stick to that point that you just made. Okay, let me get this. Watch this. Give me Titus 1.14. I'm jumping, but I'm staying on topic with you. Titus 1.14. Okay. Titus 1 verse 14. Listen good. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Don't give heed to Jewish fables. The word fables means what? Stories. Stories, lies. There's a lot of lies that's been indoctrinated in the minds of Negroes. Go ahead. And commandments of men. And commandments of men. That turn from the truth. That turn you from the truth. What, you know what the truth is? <laughs> what is the truth? Uh, the truth is that uh, Christ came in the flesh, the word is the beginning, God himself came out of flesh. Give me Psalms 119 and call it. Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, 
and the law is the truth. See what the truth is? What's the truth? The law is the truth. God's law is the truth. That's something a lot of black men and black women don't understand. They go around, they, they follow commandments of men which turn from the truth. Like a lot of the things that you're saying is not Bible based. It's something that either you sat down and took a Xanax and it popped in your head or somebody whispered it in your ear. I'm like, what are you coming with? So that's why, watch this, give me uh, 1 Timothy 2. This is what God says about women. Now, I don't want you to get offended and run down the street I'm mad. I'm already offended. Oh, you're already offended? Just because you said that, I'm already offended. <laughs> uh, right here, 2 and 12. First Timothy, no, 2 and 11. 1 Timothy 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. You know what all subjection means? Like, you have children? No. Okay. When you have children, or if you have two, you're gonna have, you have nieces and nephews. Okay. They'll say, Auntie, what's that? And you'll say, it's a plane. they will go, okay, what's that? A bus. Whatever you tell them, they're going to listen and absorb it. They're not gonna fight you. You understand? So God's message to women, once again, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So that's why when God set up his holy men, he says, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Not, yeah, I gotta cross, let me say this. I think, mm -mm, that's where the problems with black marriages come in. Because the woman wants to push what she feels or what she thinks. We don't. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to observe authority over the man. So you hear what God says? He said, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to take authority over the man. So that's why when during the time of Christ, when Christ rose up the apostles, what did the women do? They followed. They supported, they were aids unto them. They wasn't, yeah, I feel this, or I think, ah. They were not doing that. Right. You understand? Right. That's issue has a husband. She doesn't have a husband. Did Mary and Martha have a husband? Mary and Martha, the two women that followed Christ. No, they did not. They were, what were they doing? They was anointing Christ, washing his feet, taking, so when, they, when he died, when he, huh? Yes, they, they, they sat at his feet. Remember this one issue in, the, in Matthew, where Mary says, Lord, tell Martha to help me in the kitchen. He said, Mary, you're troubled with a lot of things, but Martha has taken that which she has desired, which is to learn. She sat at Christ's feet and just learned. She learned. That's what she did. She's in silence. She learned. Okay, and you're saying that you're saying, are you asking No, you can ask questions, but once you learn, like for example, let me ask you this. What is your nationality? According to the Bible. Because when dealing with immaculate conception and all of that, it doesn't get to the root of the matter about who you are in this Bible. The Bible names over 18 nations. Which one do you come from? I come from the tribe of God. You come from, how do you know that? Um, because I know. Mm. You gotta, I want you to give, so I need to know that you understand because white people come by and say, I'm from the tribe of God. And I say, you're a liar. Because I say, prove it, they can't prove it. Now I'm asking you, prove it. Well, according to, um, what is that? It's Genesis 49, mm -hmm. Exodus What does Genesis 49 say? It, it talks about the different um, The different tribes. tribes. And right. what does it say about Gad? It says that Gad has been attacked. It says a troop shall overcome. Right. So is but, but, but he overcomes in the end. Yes. Now is it safe to say that you know that you're an Israelite? Yeah. Okay, give me numbers 15. Numbers 15. You know what verse? Come on. Verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fridges in the borders of their garments. Now this is the law that God gave unto all the children of Israel, not just the men. That's why you see us with our fringes. You understand that? Come on. Numbers 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And they put, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a-whoring. So one of the laws of God for our people 
is that we put friends, just like the North American Indians, the tribe of Gad. When you're exempt, do we have any pictures yep, of the yep, tribe yep, of Gad? Yep, yep. Let's take a look at it. Can you point to the, how they dress? Right, they wore fringes and ribbon of blue. That's how the white, I let the white man knows they're the, they're the Israelites. Okay, you understand that, sister? That was a law. Do you obey that law? Sometimes. <laughs> oh, we got a sometime, a sometime Israelite. It's the truth. I don't want to lie. We must, and I'm glad you won't lie to us. <laughs> but in this faith, in this truth, we must obey God not sometimes, but all the time. You understand? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, you had another question I know. Let's deal with easy things. Okay, that way everybody's edified. Come on. Where do you learn at? What school do you go to or have gone to? In silence in my house. <laughs> in silence in your house. Are you married? No. Why? Um, my choice. My choice. Give me First Timothy 5. I think it's 18. I'm, I'm shooting from the hip. Let me look at it. You know I'll be getting things wrong. No. Give me one. Oh, you're right here. 14. First Timothy 5, verse 14. I would therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Because just as men have an order to go out into the street and fulfill the, the laws that God gave them, women also have an order. Women have an order to what? Read it again. I would therefore that the younger women marry. Now you marry. don't look old to me. You don't look past that age. Unless you, if you're 65, I'll go, okay, I'll leave you alone. Read it again. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Because a woman's order, watch this, I'm going to show you her order for more. Give me Titus chapter, give me, help me, chapter two. Chapter two. Two, where about the older women. Two and three. Two and three. Two and three. Two and three. Calm down. Titus, second chapter, the third verse. The aged woman, likewise. Now this is in case you were one of them aged women, because that's hard to tell your age. That's a good thing. Go ahead. The aged woman, likewise, <laughs> that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. So your order is to behave yourself as becometh holiness. Go ahead. Not false accusers. Meaning gossipers. Not giving too much wine. Not a drunkard. Teacher of good things. Now women are commanded to be teachers of good things, but it's going to tell you what. That they may teach the young women. Your order is to teach the young women to be sober. To be sober minded. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Go ahead. To love their children. And to love their children. You see how many black women out of order out here? You Israelite women who know the truth, God gave you an order to fulfill. So all that you have learned on the bit that you know, you're to learn more and you have an order to fulfill. You cannot say, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do me, I'm going to do my own thing. It's out of order. That's like a brother says, I'm not going out to teach. I'm going to stay home and watch and be on Facebook all day. It's out of order. Because God commanded the men, go out and teach. He commanded the men, be over the house. He commanded the women, teach the young women and the children. That's what he commanded you. You understand? What's your name? Denise. You don't have a Hebrew name? Oh, you got 14 letters in Judith? Judith, yes. Judith. Okay, Judith. Okay. Now, do you agree with what we just read, what God just said? You do. So now, you, like many of our sisters, they all must fall in order before Messiah returns. We Women cannot be doing their own thing. But it's not everybody that's going to get married. That's, I, that if you don't want to get married, maybe you had a bad relationship in the past. I don't know. No, it's not that. But when you do have a husband and you have to submit to that, so oh, now she done hit on something right there. A lot of sisters don't want to get married because there are a lot of crazy brothers out there, right? It's not even just crazy. It's just that the fact that they don't even acknowledge God and they think that they're God and whatever they do is correct. And I can't submit myself to that. I know that. Mm. So I, I can't do it. Get me the scripture. Help me out here. You know I'm getting old and slow. Get me the scripture in Apocrypha says about, uh, give me Sirach 6 or 7 first. Then give me the one about follow after a godly man. That one. Have company with a godly man. That one. Right. Sirach 6 and 7. Here it goes. Now this is the problem with a lot of young women. A lot of black women. This is why they all grow up with no daddies. Okay, when a daddy leave the house. Watch this. Sirach 6 verse 7. 
If thou wouldst get a friend... A lot of you want friends. You want male friends. Meaning you want a husband in this context. Prove him first. The Bible says prove him first. And be not hasty to credit and him. And don't because some brothers come with a Bible, a nice smile, and they the devil the Bible speaks of. So women must prove a man first. Just like men must prove a woman. Who found that scripture for me? Seek ye after being in the company of a godly man. Help me out. Yes, it's in the apartment. Y'all found it for me yet? Okay, so now, huh? that was Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, we just read verse 7. Okay, so a lot of sisters like yourself have not gotten married because they have come across a lot of good, no good men. And you know what happens when a woman meets a no good man? When y'all get it, just let me know. Give me Sirach 25, the one about a woman that takes care of a no good man. Give me that one. You know that one? No, I don't. Here we go. Tell me. 22. 22, is it? Come on. If a woman, a oh, woman, that right. Okay. So rock 25, verse 22. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. So that's why a lot of marriages are broken up. Now in this context, it's talking about a, a woman that has to take care of a man. The man ain't trying to put his brick in, he's Obama. It ain't talking about the man that lost his job, but he's hunting, trying to get himself together. That's not what that's talking about. Read it again. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Go ahead. A wicked woman. See, it's talking about a wicked woman. A man the courage. So this woman that's angry got a no good man. She got a man that ain't right, like a lot of our sisters today. Got men that are not right. So they're filled with anger. That's why a lot of them like yourself. Say, I don't want no man. I'm not getting my away from Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. You found it for me? Come on. 37 and 12. Listen good to this. Surah 37, verse 12. But be continually with a godly man when thou knowest to keep the commandments. Read it again. Read it properly. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So the Bible says, be thou continuously with a godly man, one who you know keep the commandments. In order to know he keeps the commandments, you gotta prove him. You gotta be around him, you gotta observe him. Listen to his conversation, watch his eyes. Because if his eyes is going from your eyes to your breasts and up and down like that, you know what he's about. He ain't about nothing. He just wanna get in, hit it, and run. So that's not a godly man. But a man is going to look at a woman and have desires for her. But before you, like so many of us say, open your legs up, you gotta prove him. Like it said in Sirach 6 and 7. Read this again for us. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So now, once with all that, once you go through all that, falls in Titus where it tells you your order. Falls in Timothy where it tells you your order. So women, before this, the age before death or the Messiah comes, Every man of Israel, every woman must fall in their proper order. In silence with all subjection to what this Bible says. Okay. Do you have a flyer, sister? A who? A flyer. A little I bit. sure do. It's in my bag. Okay. Now, if you want, our school doors is open to you. That's if you want. Though. So now let me ask you, is this something? Look, if you look at our signs, look at what this sign is saying. Is this something that you don't agree with? You need to understand. That's simple. I need women to understand simple things first. Okay. Let's see. You did. I just wanted to make sure I got your name. So in the new, in the Old Testament, rather, God was talking. He had Deborah. He had Ruth. He had Esther. He had all those women. Right, yeah. That were doing various battles. Oh, I'm gonna let you talk. Then I'm gonna come at you. Go ahead. They were doing various battles. Like for one, he had Esther who chopped off the head of that. That bride. wasn't Esther, but go ahead. It I, wasn't I, Esther? No. no. Well, go ahead. I'm just listening. Oh, I thought it was Esther. She, it's all right. Oh, well, no. The, the, was it Judith? Yes, it was. Okay. Let her, let her, I, want her to, I want Judith to talk. I want to hear her, well, her there's, spirit. There's Esther who she. Um, God used her in order to take down the sergeant, colonel, or whoever he was in charge of the army that was um, set to kill um, the children of Israel. Okay. Then, 
Um, no, as a matter of fact, you're right. Esther was the one with the king. Yes. Right, got it. Okay. So, she spoke to the king on behalf of the children of Israel and told him that he was lied to by whoever they were. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, there was Deborah, who he used to talk to um, the men of Israel who were supposed to go out in battle. And she said that God told her to tell them such and such. And the guy goes, well, we won't go to war unless you come with us. And she goes, well, then if I come, that means I'm going to collect your reward. So just to be careful about that, right? I'm listening. Before I say yay on them, I'm listening to you. Okay. Then I'm going to so, come. Okay. So I'm saying that, just to say, that even though women are supposed to be submissive and all that, we still had a role on the battlefield, whether subtle or on the front line. You let me know when you finish. Okay. Sister Judith. You said simple. We can go back No, no, I said now. sister. Yeah, I know, but you said keep it simple, sir. Okay, that's very simple. Now. Oh, we can go back we'll go over back there? Down, yeah. All right. Judith, we're going to go back over there. I want to make sure this women's thing about immaculate conception is clear. Because you see your face? I just want to read. Before I deal with all the women that she mentioned, I'm going to deal with it. Can you read? You see this Bible dictionary? You see that? Okay. I'm looking up Mary, the virgin. I'm looking that up. And I'm going to read from... Don't worry about it. I'm, going, I'm showing you. I'm, I'm getting this part here. The scholars, white man scholars wrote this. Okay. Just read this part here about in the uh, distinct about Mary, Virgin Mary. Listen good. Mary, distinctive Roman Catholic doctrine. Wait, she didn't. Judith didn't hear what you read. Distinctive Roman Catholic doctrine about Mary. So the Immaculate Conception is a distinctive Roman Catholic doctrine. When did it come about? 1854. 1854. Where was we in 1854? Where were our ancestors? Slavery. Go ahead. Immaculate Conception. An Assumption of Mary. And Assumption of Mary. 1950. 1950 was when the Assumption of Mary came. Now that we got that out, I just wanted to... Put the icing on the cake with that. Now, you asked about Deborah, you asked about Esther, you asked about who else? Judith. Judith? Okay, Ooh, let's let's deal with and Ruth. Let's go to what I want first. Give me Deborah first. Because a lot of sisters. Now Judith, I'm gonna say something. I'm leaving. No, don't leave. Don't leave. A lot of sisters, the same thing you quoted, a lot of Christian women quote that. And you, I'm going to tell you why they do. I don't know why you did. I can't read your spirit yet. I got to hear you talk more. But these Christian women are bringing up. You know why they do it? Because they'll hear about let the women keep silence. And they go, ah! We ain't got to obey that because they run Deborah, Judith, Esther. They run to justify disobeying what God said. That's not what I'm doing. Okay. Right? Okay, that's not what you're doing. Now. Give me Judges, uh, what is it, chapter 9 or chapter 5? Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter and 5. Verse 9. Okay, now this is about Deborah. Read verse 1, then jump down to verse 9. Mm -hmm. Judges 5, verse 1. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abihom, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the invention of Israel, but the people willingly open themselves. Now jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Now this is what Deborah said. We're going here to find out if Deborah, now I'm not yelling at you, I'm exalting my voice. We're finding out if Deborah was a woman of God in order, or was she rebellious? Go ahead. Judges 5 verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. My heart, meaning my mind, is toward the governors, the leadership of Israel. So she was in perfect order with the men of Israel. She was not out of order. Now, let's talk about her going to war. Is there any scripture that says she did battle on the battlefield? This is why we must understand Bible history. We must understand war. When you go to war, where do you put your... Give me some words, help armor. me out. Not your armor, come on, brothers. Where do you put your fiddles, your, your, your clothing, your, your supplies? Where do you put that in when you go to war? 
No, no. I know you're a woman, so I'm going to feel subjective. Oh, okay. When men go to war, you see how when we go to war, our stuff is? You see where all our stuff is, right? We're at war, it's spiritual war. But we don't carry our stuff on us. Deborah did not go out battling with swords and all that. She sat under a tree and prophesied. That's what uh, Barak asked the Lord to allow her to come. But she didn't go, or come on, we'll get you. She wasn't doing that. That was not the order. That's why read verse 9 again. Verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offer themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. So her heart was unto the governors of Israel. She was in perfect order. So now you mentioned Esther also, right? Give me Esther, I think it's chapter 4, when Mordecai said, talk to the king for us. Because she was queen, correct? Esther was queen of Persia. The Persian king took her as his queen. No, he wanted her. He took her. He said, he took her. She's queen. Now, start at verse 12. Esther, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse. Come on. And they told Mordecai Esther's words. So now, wait, I'm going to fill in the gaps for you. Mordecai heard about the plan of Haman. His plan was to destroy the children of Israel. Okay? They were the tribe of Benjamin. He, Mordecai said, tell Esther she's the queen. Go ahead. Then then Mordecai, he told Esther, and then now she gives back these words. Go ahead. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house. Don't think because you're queen, you're going to escape in the king's house. Go ahead. More than all the Jews. More than all the Jews. For if thou art together, holdest thy peace if at you, this time. If at this time, if you hold your peace, you don't help your people. Go ahead. Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. God will raise someone else up. Go ahead. But thou, but you, Esther. You, Esther, and thy father's house, and your whole father's house, shall be destroyed. Shall be destroyed. Go ahead. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? He said, for who knows? Maybe this is why you were made queen, Esther, to de help deliver your people. You know why this history is important? In society today, a lot of our sisters get high positions, and they disregard their people. Oprah Winfrey, what's the sister's name with President, President Michelle Delisa Rice? There's a whole lot of them, and they disregard their people. But when you read the Bible, when yeah. Esther became queen, when you read the whole history, she rose Mordecai up, she helped, and they helped lead Israel. Meaning what? She sealed all of the writings of Mordecai with the king's insignia. And it said Israel got wealth and fame under that reign. She wasn't out of order. So now, what? She was just like Paul said in Timothy about the women. She was in order. Right. Deborah was in order. Judith, the one that cut the man's head off. She was in order. When you read, what did the men do with, with Judith? You remember? The men were scared. The men were scared. Do you see the men? Look before you right here. Do you feel that we're scared to teach the Lord's word? Not at all. There's no need. For the women to rise up. Why? Because there's men here. There's not just us. There's other Israelite camps all over the country that's doing this work. So there's not during that time of Judah for the men said, We're scared. Let's go turn ourselves in. And Judah had to turn around and go, What's wrong with y'all? What you talking about? She had to go do what she had to do and kill him. But that is not the case today. Right. You understand, Judah? I feel like that. You feel like that today? Yeah. Uh -huh. They're out there doing a lot of things to hurt themselves. Like what? And, and Tell me so I know what you're talking about. Um, for instance, they're making more than normal. Okay. Right? They're having sex with a whole bunch of women. Yes. Which is not taking care of themselves. They're not looking towards God for their, their guidance, their teaching, anything. Uh -huh. And on top of it, they're easily by so many distractions that they can't recognize or don't even want to recognize the truth. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. But guess what? Give me John 14, 26. This is a new day, sister. This is a new day. This is what Messiah said regarding his people. John 14, 26. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the law, whom the Father will send in my name. Uh -huh. 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. And bring all things to your remembrance. So as these men raise up as we see before you, and they're learning the laws of the Most High, is there going to be mistakes? Do you think there's going to be mistakes just like this? When you stumble, like it says in Ecclesiastes, about a righteous man fall up how many times? Seven times, but he get it back up. In this life, you're going to all stumble. But these men must try and get their lives right. Just like you sisters must try and get your lives right. Okay? So that's why it would behoove you to find yourself in an Israelite congregation. You know why? You know why? I'm explaining why. Give me Hebrews 10.26. I'm going to show you why. It's very important. It is not for us to do our own thing. Why? Because this is the law. Hebrews 10, verse 26. For if we sin... No. Uh, 25. 25. Not, uh, sorry, Hebrew 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. What does that mean, Eunice? Read it again, Father. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. Stop. What does that mean? Come together right. and not, not want to be here with you. Exactly. What you're saying. Exactly. So right after, like when we leave here today, we go back to our where we gather at where our, our wives, our sons, and our daughters are, and we all have fellowship. Like for example, tonight is the new moon, and we all come together and feast on these days, which God commanded us to. Read that again. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We see the, what is the day that's approaching that we see? What day is he talking about? Yes, when Christ returns, he's going to destroy America. We see all of the, some, all of the, all of the prophecies in the news, correct? You watch the news, you see Syria uh, sending, uh, Syria, who's, Russia is sending weapons to Syria. Israel is now saying we will have to start bombing Russia if they continue to do that. What do you think is going to happen once they start interfering with Russia sending weapons to Syria? It's going to be World War III. So read it again for us. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as he sees the day approaching. We see the day approaching. So that's why we gather together more and more and more. We ain't got time to play games. Because when the Lord returns, he's going he's gonna to judge us based on his writings. You want to do your own thing, he's going to go, you've been very disobedient. You've been doing your own thing since birth. Away with you. That's what I'm telling you, Judith. Because a lot of sisters and brothers, not just you, we want to do our, we, I do me. No, when you come into this truth, we got to fulfill and fall in line and be a, be a part of a nation because we are the nation of what? Israel. That's what, born again is about. That's what being born again is all about. Any more questions, Judith? Yes. yes. So, because what I've learned is that there's 13 months in here and not 12. So. Mm, okay. Same way how Jacob had 12 sons but one daughter. Mm. So he had 13 children. Mm. You're very, you can whoever taught you these things are very, give me the all the foundations of the earth. Find me that. Psalms 90. 82 and 5. Thank 82 and 5. you. Yeah. Give me that. Judith said that she already did 13 new moons. Now, that's why the white man has what they call a leap year. Everything in this system, listen Judith, just listen. Everything in this kingdom is out of order. This is what the prophecy says. Psalms 82 verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Everything in this earth is out of course. That's why when Messiah returns, he's going to set everything in its proper order. Everything, including the months and the day, everything will be set in order. But until then, you and I and all Israel must fall in line and give me Judges 5 and 11 and rehearse these righteous acts. Because some people say, I don't keep the new moon, or the Sabbath, or the high holy day because of this, because of that. It's always some reason why don't do it. Judges 5 and 11. Judges 5 verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. The noise of archers. In, 
uh, right. in the place of drawing water. Then shall they rehearse the righteous acts. Read it again, Father. Read it again. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Stop. The noise of archers. You ever shot a bow and arrow? No. I have. Does it make a big noise? That's a whisper thing. Yeah, it's a whisper thing. So this is not what this is talking about. Read it again. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. They that are delivered from the noise yeah. of archers. What kind of arrow makes noise? That's why you gotta know some military terms. That's what the, that's the military term for a bomb, an arrow. It's called an arrow. Like there's a movie with uh, Broken, arrow. Broken Arrow starring uh, John, Travolta. John, Travolta. John Travolta and somebody else. Read it again. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Talking about the bombs. In the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water means the places of slavery. We draw, to be a drawer of water means you're a slave, a servant. Talking about here in America, Barbados, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Trinidad, Tobago. Go ahead. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. There in those places, Judah, shall they what? Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. We all must rehearse. We, you know what rehearsal is? Yeah, practice. Practice for what? What are we practicing for? I'm going to I'm explain it to you. When you, when you act in a school play, when you went to school, they might have had a play. You rehearse, right? For the main event. This right now, when we go, this is not the main event. This is all rehearsal time. Get me Ezekiel uh, 20 about when we're delivered. I'm going to show you what we're rehearsing for. Ezekiel 20 and you know the part. Uh, 32. 32, is it? Yeah. Uh, let me look. 33. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 20 verse 33 As I live, said the Lord God Surely with a mighty hand And with a stretched arm And with fury poured out Will I rule over you So God is going to rule over the children of Israel In fury That myth you got about a kind Gentle Jesus is a lie Read And I will bring you out from the people God says He's going to bring us out from the people. Listen good, Judith. Listen good. And will gather you out of the countries where he has scattered. The Lord said he's going to gather us out of the countries where we were scattered as a race. With, with a mighty hand. With a mighty hand. And with a stretched out arm. And with a stretched out arm. And with fury poured out. And with fury poured out. Because God ain't going to play with nobody. Read. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Just like when we came into ancient Egypt. We were in the wilderness, correct, Judith? The Bible says it's going to do the same thing again. When he delivers us from here, he's going to bring us back to the wilderness of the people. Read. And there will I plead with you face to face. And God's going to plead with us what? Face to face. Face to face. Read. Like, I, uh, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. Just like he did with our fathers in the wilderness of Egypt. He, pled, he taught us face to face using Moses as the mediator. Read. So will I plead with you. So will I plead with you. Say the Lord God. Say the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. What is the covenant? The new covenant. Right now, this is rehearsal time. That's why we got grace now. Because we make a lot of mistakes. But in this day, Judith, rehearsal time is over. If you have not been rehearsing, Congregating with your brothers and sisters, fellowshipping, fulfilling your order. When we get to the wilderness, you think you're gonna learn it that quick? You've not been rehearsing. What happens with an actor who does not rehearse? They mess up. They mess up. And it's gonna tell you what's gonna happen. Read. And I will purge out from uh, sorry, and I will purge out from among you the rebels. You know who those rebels are? The ones who have not been rehearsing. I'm going to do my own thing. I ain't got to congregate with nobody. I'm going to stay home. Do my own thing. I don't got to get married. I don't need no man. I don't need no woman to hell with that. I ain't doing none of that stuff. Those brothers and sisters who reject what is written, and they did it again. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And them that transgress against me. Because a lot of people, a lot of Israelites, got justifications of why they don't do certain things. I can't read your heart. I can't read nobody's heart. But guess who can? The Lord knows. Some women, they say, I don't want no man. Maybe it is because they can't find a good one. But some women just don't want a man. You know why? I don't want no man telling me S-H-I-T. That's some women. 
I'm not saying it's you, but no, something. Alright? I love my brother. Brother, do me a favor, take Come on, where you was at? And I will bring them forth out of the country wherein they sojourn. And I will bring you out of the countries where you sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And God said you will not enter into the land of Israel. He's going to bring you to the wilderness. He's going to bring all of us. But when he teaches these laws face to face, if you have not been rehearsing, you've had an excuse. I've an excuse. He said, I'm not going to bring you into the country. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. You understand that, Judith? That's why we don't have time to play with our brothers and sisters. Our job is to teach you, and those that come will come. Those that get Ecclesiastes 32, 17, and the Apocrypha. 32, who can, come on! Ecclesiastes 32, 17. Ecclesiastes 32, verse 17. Listen good, Judith. A sinful man will not be reproved. God says a sinful man will not be reproved. But findeth an excuse according to his will. But we'll find an excuse according to his will. A lot of black men like that. A lot of black women too. We're filled with excuses. Well, the reason I don't do this is because of that. The reason I won't do that is because of this. The most I said, that's a sinful man. That's a sinful woman like that. Always got an excuse. So in being born again, we got to humble down like we read earlier with all, what was the word? Huh? You don't know? Give me that again. First Timothy 2 for 211 for Judah. Oh. Huh? It calls, that's close enough. But read again for 211. First Timothy 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. That's rehearsal time. If you're not subjected now, rehearsing, listening, and learning, when we get to the wilderness, guess what the woman gonna say? I know Lord said 144,000 you niggas right there. Judith didn't have to listen to you. The Lord didn't have to listen to you. That's the, the same thing. And guess what? When the Lord come on the scene, he gonna look down at you and go, "Back, you crush." That's what's gonna happen because they have not applied these basic principles yet. You understand that?